know how many of you have this much photographic gear, but no matter how much gear you have, I have a question for you. When you think about doing your photography, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? I'm gonna grab a coffee and we'll talk about it. Right, got the coffee. Gotta have the coffee to keep going on a day like today. Welcome to the channel, everyone. I'm Hayward. Habits. Habits are funny things. Habits can really help you improve yourself. You can become more skilled by building good habits. They can also tear you down. Bad habits can drag you down and keep you from where you want to go. I'm going to talk about three bad habits that are, wow, I don't know how to say this. Every photographer, I think, has to deal with them at some point, but they really can waste your time and keep you from where you want to go with your photography. So I'm going to go back to the very first question I asked. When you think about doing your photography, what's the very first thing that pops into your mind. Is it your camera gear and, and you do you see your camera gear and you start thinking about f-stops and shutter speeds and lighting or do you visualize a finished image? You can kind of guess where I'm going with this first one. The first bad habit is thinking about the gear instead of the photography. If you're thinking about the gear by definition, you're not thinking about where you're going. You're thinking about the map instead of the destination. It is really easy to fall into that trap because as photographers, we all love fooling with the camera gear. It's fun, it's tech, it, it does all kind of cool things, but it doesn't help you make better images if you're thinking about it instead of what you want to create. Remember, this is art, and you kind of have to have two parts of your brain to do it because it has a very technical part and a very artistic part, and you have to bring them together to be effective as a photographer. Okay, so thinking about your equipment instead of the photograph you want to create is the bad habit. What do you do about it? You want to train yourself the good habit is to immediately start visualizing a look. You may need some visual aids for this, some, some albums or browsing the web or whatever it is where you've got your backlog of good images that you like, whether it's your own or someone else's, that gets you thinking about the kind of photograph you want to create and the lighting, how you want to have your subject. It, I'm a portrait photographer, so I'm always talking about subjects, but if you're a landscape photographer, you can start visualizing the kind of weather, time of day. You get it. There's always a way to start pre-visualization. Pre-visualization is the good habit to kill the bad habit of thinking about equipment. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm going to talk about a bad habit and the cure for the bad habit. I learned it some years ago, or I heard it said that the cure grows next to the disease or the problem. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm gonna give you the cure with these bad habits today. So let's move on to the next bad habit. This one's subtle, so I, I wanna be real clear here. The bad habit is copying instead of imitating. Now I know that that sounds really similar, but the old saying again, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery Copying is the worst form of unoriginality. There's a difference. And the difference speaks to the cure for it. Copying is often done by raw beginners. And in the old days of painting, they would have the students copy masterworks. It teaches the muscle memory, teaches the mind. It, it just gets you to do things in good ways, but you have to break free of copying. Imitating means you're taking elements from different works of art 
that you like and using them for yourself. Because for me, the definition of style is just a sum total of all your choices. You make, you make 25 or 30 choices in a photograph, and every time you make that 25 or 30 choices over and over again, it becomes your style. You're not going out making a checklist of things. They're your preferences. Your preferences is your style. You don't have to put a name to it. Other people will do that when they look at your photography. Your style is the choices you make to create your art. By imitating other photographers or artists that you like, you're broadening your style. You're not copying. Learn the difference between imitation and copying because imitating and expanding your style is the cure to copy. Okay, so the next bad habit, and it might not sound bad at first, is doing or practicing too much without learning. It's a little confusing, right? But I'll tell you, if there's any pros listening here, you'll understand what I mean pretty quick. I, I'll do this, I'll mention this one in a little bit of my experience. I used to play golf poorly, but one of the things when you're trying to learn golf and almost every other thing is that you've got to practice, practice, practice. But you got to be careful what you're practicing, right? You can practice a bad swing and you're going to regret it because your teacher is going to have to undo all the bad practice. Well, that's what I'm talking about. If you're constantly practicing and doing, and as a professional, we have to do quite a bit without learning or keeping your eye on the ball or making sure you're improving, you're kind of stagnating and maybe even going backwards. It's a bit of a trap, but the cure, of course, is to make sure that you force yourself to periodically learn new things, refine what you already know, spend time with a mentor or in a class, but you've got to shake it up a little bit. You can't just keep doing, doing, doing because you probably are just going to slowly decay. Don't stagnate. You have to try new things, learn new things, or you're probably just going to stagnate. Okay, short video today, that's it. Three bad habits, but I'll tell you what, those three bad habits, you could spend a lifetime working on the alternative or the cure form. I hope you've gotten something out of this video. These are things I actually have to myself as a professional work on, and I hope I can share my experience with you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I appreciate you spending the time watching this video. Until the next video, cheers.